All right, let's continue the fun, shall we? I'm Joe Rentham with my real honest thoughts on WWE's 50 Greatest Women list. This is part three. I went a bit long ranting about Stephanie McMahon on part two, so you're going to get a part four because I'm going to rant about a couple particular people. One, where they were placed on this list, and one, being placed on this list at all, though I should have fucking seen it coming. Yes, this is a subjective list, and obviously people are going to get all upset. Wrestling Twitter is in a goddamn firestorm. I also want to emphasize these are just my opinions, my thoughts. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I do want to say, I'm not going to tell you guys how to feel. If you agree, disagree with me, however, I it's all good. Because that's a great thing about being a wrestling fan. We can all have good, healthy discussions. Unlike Stan Twitter. If you are one of those that are telling people that don't like your favor to the fatal attraction, crazy, obsessive level that they should get injured, get sick, or end their goddamn life, you're fucking assholes. You can go to hell. Grow the fuck up. Seriously. Or just get the fuck off of Twitter because you're goddamn toxic and pieces of shit. Anyway... So, Sarah Schreiber, I love her as a host. I think she's great. I think she's got, you know, good energy and everything. And she's got a nice uh, demeanor as well, just, like, introducing us. And ha you can you can tell that she wants to be there. She's got she's got some good, you know, presence on camera. So, we start off with number 17, Paige. Paige had that great match with uh, Emma at uh, NXT Arrival, which I keep calling NXT TakeOver Arrival, because, to me, it was a TakeOver before the TakeOver name happened. Um, that was the match of the show, in my personal opinion. All due respect to uh, the latter match, Neville and Bo Dallas, which was a great match. I thought Emma and Paige stole the show. And then, you know, Paige had that match uh, right after WrestleMania 30, the Raw after WrestleMania 30, where she beat AJ Lee. She's the anti-diva. She won anti-anti-diva. Anti! Anyway, she beat AJ Lee and then had that, you know, feud back and forth and stuff like that. And then she wouldn't really do all that much after that. She would team with AJ Lee at WrestleMania 31, and then, well, from there, she would suffer the neck injury. She would come back, and she would have a brief comeback, and then, you know, would unfortunately have to retire. And it's unfortunate she had to retire so goddamn young, but at least it protected her health. And unfortunately, in the, mo in you know, recent years, like especially the last, like, year and a half, I've had a bit of a hard time defending Paige because she is as toxic as her current boyfriend has shown, you know, a lot of toxic behavior, and I really have a hard time defending that. So if she can pull her head out of her ass and grow the fuck up, then maybe I will have a better opinion of her. And also, she's talking about possibly coming back, you know, medical science advancing and everything. I don't know if that should happen because, one, I don't know if she deserves to come back, given the fact that she has pretty much crapped on a whole lot of people that shouldn't have been crapped on. But also, you know, her neck was hanging on by a thread even after surgical procedures. So even if medical science has got merit, she's found other treatments, you really want her to come back and risk having her ne neck snap like a goddamn twig? I wouldn't. Um, I would have ranked Paige, honestly, in the 30s. I, I don't think that Paige's accomplishments warranted her being ranked this high. That's my personal opinion. Like, just taking a look at the accolades of various others, I would have just ranked her a lot lower. But, you know what? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And then we get to number 16, Sable. Okay, I've been looking forward to this one. I mean, I was afraid that they were going to rank her in the top 10. I'm actually surprised they didn't. And I'm going to go back to the AJ Lee entrant, and I'm going to reference her promo that she said about the Bellas. Talent isn't sexually transmitted. And that is proof of Sable. Now, at the time, she was married to Mark Merrow, um, you know, who was Johnny B. Bad, Marvelous Mark Merrow and everything. And Mark Merrow was a good talent. He was never going to be a world champion, but he was fine mid-card talent. Johnny B. Bad was a pretty good character in WCW. He had the TV championship runs. Um, he worked with DDP in a series of good matches, and he actually could do some really good stuff. And then they pretty much, you know, neutered him when he got to WWE. He had that brief Intercontinental Championship run. Um, they really didn't do much with him after that because Vince McMahon and Vince Russo were fixated on Sable. I have never shied away from the fact I despise Sable, and I absolutely despise her. Now, I'm happy that her and Brock have children, and that they, you know, they have a happy life, and that's great. Sable is one of the most disgusting, vile-looking people that has ever been in wrestling, and I'll explain why I say that. Because you could see she didn't want to be there except to be on television and earn all that money and everything, and you think about Ivory, you think about, you know, Jacqueline, you think about Luna Vachon, you think about so many other women that were there at that goddamn time, at that fucking time, that deserved the money that Sable got, but oh, Sable got big ratings. Yeah, there were a lot of, you know, 
repressed guys that were uh, in the audiences for the Attitude Era that were watching that and everything and wanted to see somebody that was nipped and tucked to the point that she would have looked like a Sharpe puppy if you took the goddamn clothespins off. Yeah, I find Sable disgusting and I find her vile. And you know what? It, it's funny that she got over a million dollars to be in Playboy. Playboy must have been fucking desperate. And yes, wrestling was hot by that point. WCW was on fire. WWE was on fire. Even ECW was on fire, even though they were bleeding money like crazy because Paul Heyman was a great... Creative mind, but not a great businessman, but I digress. Sable, one of the biggest embarrassments ever to professional wrestling. Now, I know there are people that like her, and that's fine if you like her. That is fucking great. I don't care if, you know, somebody wants to get offended by what I say because I'm just stating my opinions. I'm not telling you how to feel. The first time I saw her, she was, you know, tr uh, Triple H's uh, jacket getter. She decided to jack it off, which kind of makes sense for how she was able to stay in wrestling by jacking it off. Because, I'm sorry, she had no discernible talent, she had no promo ability, she had no presence on camera, she didn't want to get hurt, she didn't want to take bumps and everything. And as much as I knocked, you know, like, women like Kelly Kelly, example, be, and I'm just going to go back to that and everything. Kelly Kelly was thrown out there with absolutely no training and at least took the bumps. Now, whether she was good or not at it was subject to debate, but she took those bumps. Stacey Keebler took those bumps. Tori took those bumps. Women sense, you know, Sable came around, this gutter trash, this seed dumpster, and that's what she basically was. And she wasn't the only one I'm going to talk about. That's basically what she was. She was a piece of shit to everybody in the goddamn locker room. If you talk to anybody, she was a snot-nosed uh, you know, fucking trash heap, and all she went, and I'm choosing my words carefully here, because I don't want to get banned, but you know the words I want to say, it's a third layer of the alphabet, that's what it fucking is, um, Sable never, ever belonged in wrestling, yes, she got attention from people, because they were sick of Sonny, apparently, and as much as I knock Sonny, and don't worry, I'm gonna knock her here a little bit you know, later with a video package they do, at least Sonny knew something about wrestling, loved wrestling, and could cut good promos, now, she was a bitch, but she knew she was a bitch, and she was honest about it, and I will give her credit for that. And I do reference, anytime I hear Sable's promos, and this is, you know, during that feud with uh, Mark Merrow, which just fucking destroyed him, her dancing, this is for all the men who, uh, or women who want to be me, and the men who come to see me. Any man that came to see her, seek professional help. I mean, we all have preferences, but good fucking God. Vince McMahon and Vince Russo finding Sable attractive. I'll never understand it, but then again, I mean, Vince Russo with a goddamn idiot knew nothing about wrestling that destroyed a, any company that he was involved in that wasn't WWE because, at least at the time, we had a talented Vince in charge. Sable is exactly the epitome of what I hate about wrestling. She was the female Ultimate Warrior. There is a line that uh, Jim Cornette did say that, you know, however divisive, I think this, uh, you know, line fits. I don't know what they got for putting a live microphone in front of Sable, but it should have been three to five years. Now, it should have been the freaking electric chair. Sable's promos were just, they were some of the most vapid Stepford Wives-like shit that you will ever hear. No passion, no emotion. Take a look at her matches. I mean, those matches didn't hold up even then. Now, granted, yes, women's wrestling wasn't exactly seen as anything other than titillation. Even though you had Jacqueline that could do some stuff. Sonny never really got in the ring. You had Terry that was never a wrestler, but at least tried. Terry Runnels deserved more praise than um, Sable than Sable got. And the fact that Terry Runnels, who had been Alexandra York in WCW, and I mean, maybe she had been doing something other than that. I think she was a makeup girl in WCW. But still, I love the York Foundation. Short-lived uh, Sable. Then she got with Dustin Rhodes. She was more Lena. And then all this stuff, she was part of Pretty Mean Sisters, PMS, do you get it? Do you get it? She had to be part of that horrible, um, you know, miscarriage angle with Jacqueline, or Jacqueline, thanks, Derb, I can never unhear that. You have all these women that could have done so many good things. You had Ivory, that was a great wrestler, and, you know, great talent. You had Luna Vachon, legit tough, and all this, and you know, part of the Vashon family, could cut great promos, sound like a death metal screamer. She had passion and energy and could work. And they were fixated on fucking Sable. And that was what ruined the Women's Championship for a number of years. I mean, seriously, take a look at it. Yes, they had the Women's Championship come back and they, have, and they had champions in 99. And they had champions in 2000. But what about that championship? You know, what they brought it back after, like, Alundra Blaze had dropped it in the trash on Nitro. What, what lineage did that championship have after Sable Guide? It was having to clean off, you know, clean off more spunk on it instead, you know, as opposed to like, you know, what happened with Paige and that. Anyway, moving on from that. Sable 
basically crapped on everything that the women did in wrestling before and for a couple years after. And they brought her back. They brought somebody back that sued them for a million dollars or a hundred million dollars, which was goddamn horseshit because Sable wasn't even worth 1.1% of that um, or even 0.001% of that. She wasn't worth anything by that time. Yeah, sure, she got a million dollars for Playboy. She got big ratings because there were a bunch of goddamn idiots that thought that she was really goddamn hot when she acted like a drunk aunt at a wedding trying to be sexy. And she was never anybody that was going to be a benefit to how women were perceived. Oh, she, you know, was strong. She was powerful. No, she fucking wasn't. She nearly dropped Mark Merrill in his goddamn head. She didn't want to take any goddamn bumps. She didn't want to do anything. She was the fucking shits. All she ever was was the fucking shit. And they brought her back in 2003. They brought her back in 2003 as the original cougar, before they had Vicky Guerrero be the cougar, who both looked like they got mauled by cougars and then put back together, you know, with uh, super glue and duct tape and not even the good kind of super glue, not even gorilla glue. It's not, it's like the gorilla pounded on their faces and then they put, you know, like the cheap, uh, you know, dollar store type super glue there. You know, the type that is super in the sense that. It, it's a super good deal for cheap glue. So they brought Sable back and everything, and they had her, you know, as uh, kissing Vince, the guy that she sued and stuff like that, and I'm sure water under the bridge or whatever, and hey, uh, her and Brock got together. Great. Fucking great. They got together. They got kids and stuff like that. And if I never see Sable on a WWE program again, I will be goddamn happy. Should she be inducted in the Hall of Fame? Fuck no. Miss Elizabeth is not in the Hall of Fame. Luna Vachon, I think, got inducted as part of a that legacy wing and stuff like that. You should put so many other women in there before you even consider putting Sable in there because Sable's fucking she was she was gutter trash. That's all she ever was. And that's all she portrayed on television. Oh, she, you know, was classy and then she got upset with how her husband treated her and stuff like that because they basically, again, neutered Mark Merrill and made her the star. No, it was fucking disgusting. Whether Mark Merrill would have ever been anything beyond a mid-card act is irrelevant. Sable was the one they were fixated on. If we're in the Women's Championship... She had one of the worst matches in WrestleMania history. Go actually even in Royal even in Royal Rumble history. Go back and look at that match that she had. Uh, I believe it was a strap match against Luna Vachon. Go back and watch that. Seriously, one shot laid in and Sable would have left the goddamn company. And you know what? We would have all been better for it because then we could have actually had credible women that weren't trash, that weren't pieces of shit, that weren't, you know, snot-nosed trash heaps to every single goddamn woman backstage because she thought she was so much better because to, the two Vinces, you know, that were basically in uh, positions of power, Vince McMahon and then Vince Russo, and then that piece of shit, Ed Ferrara, the whole Oklahoma impression. Oh, he deserved to be slapped repeatedly by everybody in wrestling for that, including a bunch of fans, because that was a piece of shit thing to do. Everybody was just fixated on Sable because they thought she was the epitome of this. Sure, she got ratings. You know what? So did a lot of other both. So did the Stooges in the Attitude Era. Pat Patterson, burning in hell for what he did. A whole bunch of stuff got big ratings in the Attitude Era. That doesn't mean it was good television, and Sable wasn't good television. And she had those frickin' meat flaps that had to be practically closed, pinned up so they would actually look like they were anything good. Yeah, I can't stand Sable, and I don't care if anybody gets upset about this. And this was a bit of a long rant, but say, in those few years, this is what Sable accomplished. Nuking the women's division, Basically destroyed any credibility the women's championship had. I mean, hell, they gave it to, I think it was like Jacqueline and it was Stephanie, Lita. Lita finally got it and that started to get the shine off. And women's wrestling wasn't perceived as anything all that great, but I don't want to hear that Sable pioneered the way that women were perceived in wrestling. No, she pioneered the way that women could get into uh, WWE, into wrestling in general, get a bunch of money from somebody that ended up either being you know, fixated on them or a money mark, and then would get um and then would get out and be on television and stuff like that but you know what good on sable for getting that million dollars for playboy for exposing whatever the fuck that was that she called a goddamn sexy body and it wasn't and i'm gonna state this stuff and i don't fucking care sable was trash she always will be trash the character will always be trash best wishes to her and brock and raising their kids and stuff like that but sable should never appear on wwe programming again she was shit so anyway Let's get back to this. <laughs> Let's talk about Molly Holly. Now we go from the sublime. 
Well, that no, it wasn't actually sublime. You know what? It's what I got. And what I got is uh, some kind words to say about Molly Holly because I'm just getting jumbled up because I'm still thinking about how Sable pretty much destroyed everything. While Molly Holly was doing some stuff as Miss Madness, Sable was just getting out of WWE. And she was doing great shit there. And then she came to... Uh, she came to... After WCW, that brief run, because Team Madness didn't end up working out all that well because Randy Savage left... She came in uh, as Molly Holly, the cousin of Crash Holly, and then got hooked up with Spike Dudley as an on-screen couple. Sable is everything I hate about wrestling. Molly Holly is everything that I love about wrestling. Because she was exactly what you would want to feature on television. She was great in the ring. The Molly go round was a tremendous finisher. Great shit. She could hit some good athletic moves. She could hit the handspring elbow. She could cut good promos. She was somebody your girls could look up to. Seriously, she is, she is somebody that you could look up to because she was cool and she had that, you know, that calm feel about her and everything, that, you know, just classy feel about her. And she carried herself well. And she did a lot for wrestling. I mean, think about it. She, you know, won a couple of women's championships. She, you know, was in an era where there were a lot of women that were basically just there to take their goddamn clothes off and do a whole bunch of other stuff. And Molly would, you know, do the whole thing where she would expo be exposed to having granny panties on and stuff like that. Even though Molly, I hate to say it, was a lot, a lot sexier than a lot of the other women. Molly Holly is somebody that exuded class and deserved a whole lot more than she got. But she was willing to put her hair on the line at WrestleMania 20. And guess what? She did. It was great. It was a little bit odd um, that, you know, Molly Holly had to do that, but Molly looked great with short hair. She looked great otherwise, and she kept doing good stuff. She would eventually leave, and she would, you know, do, I don't remember what else she ended up doing. I think she ended up doing some uh, good charity work and stuff like that. But she came back at a, I believe it was the first ever Royal Rumble, and she's going to be inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame. Long overdue. I'm not saying that Molly Holly's career is like, you know, the most expansive and everything, but for what she did in the short window she had, the, not, the few years that she was, you know, maybe not even on top, but featured well, she did great shit. The stuff she did with Hurricane as Mighty Molly was fucking tremendous. They had great chemistry. And Hurricane had a very emotional, um, you know, video message for her when Molly Holly was going to be inducted in the Hall of Fame, and that was good shit. That was good stuff. It showed how much it meant to Hurricane, it showed how much it meant to Mighty Molly. And, I, yeah, I'm going to call her Mighty Molly because that's, you know, the connection they had. But, seriously, Molly Holly was great. And it's just a shame that her, like, you know, one big mania moment was her getting her head shaved. But, my God, Molly Holly really was great. I really enjoyed a lot of work she did. And I wouldn't mind seeing her appear in a, a future Royal Rumble. Hell, have her show up at, you know, if they do a Women's Battle Royal. Have Molly Holly show up. She means a lot to women's wrestling. She is a big reason why you can perceive women as classy and also pure and stuff like that, whether she was or not. I mean, she seemed like one of the nicest women off camera, especially. Some people that have told me they met her said she's super nice. She's just exactly what she was on camera. And Molly Holly, again, long overdue being in the Hall of Fame, but I love uh, Molly Holly. Number 14, Victoria. Yes, the poster right back here. Victoria deserved a whole lot better than she got uh, from about 2006 to 2009 when she left. And I got nothing against her uh, with Candace and Tori as Vince's devils. It's not that Victoria isn't a beautiful woman. Oh, God, she is. But I think that they moved Victoria away from being in the ring so much that it was a bit of a... It was a bit much... Because if you think about where she started, she started as one of the Godfather's hoes. She got put through a table by China. Don't worry, I'll get to China in the next video. And then she went down to OVW, trained, and then got back up and had a great feud with Trish Stratus. The first ever CO cage match, um, you know, in for the women, and she had against Lita. There was some great shit here. Some great goddamn shit. This was absolutely tremendous to see Victoria grow and grow and grow. Like, you know, from being 21 years old, seeing, you know, me, seeing her grow as a performer, seeing her grow as a wrestler, and being just somebody that was talented, beautiful, I mean, absolutely beautiful, and really strong. I mean, she could do some great shit. She could pick people up, you know, that were bigger than her, and she could just, you know, throw them around. She could do a lot of really good stuff. She had that huge knee brace because I believe she had a knee injury that she didn't want to take time off to get surgery for because she was in the middle of a run. Shows how tough she is. And then she went to TNA and did some other stuff, and then they made her a manager, and then she recently appeared at the most recent Royal Rumble for the women, and 
Victoria, to me, should have been in the Hall of Fame a couple of years ago. And not even, like, to encapsulate that her career was over. But Victoria, to me, one of my favorites, I would argue, is one of the reasons that women's wrestling in the early to mid-2000s was as good as it was. Because, yes, Trish and Lita and Molly Holly. And there were a few others. Mickey James came along a little bit later in the decade. <clears throat> 2005 specifically, don't worry. I will talk about Mickey later. But Victoria is a big reason why I love women's wrestling. And I'm always going to be grateful for the fact that I got to see her on television. I got to see her on pay-per-view multiple times. I hope she gets inducted into the Hall of Fame. If she were to ever appear at an indie show, an indie signing in my area, I would absolutely go. And I would absolutely tell her that she is really, really great for you know, what she meant to wrestling in general, because she broke, she broke a lot of, um, molds for how women could be perceived. And she worked hard and I tipped my hat to her, even though I'm not wearing a hat, but I love Victoria. Alexa Bliss. Okay. I'm going to be brief here because I've never been the biggest Alexa Bliss fan. I understand why she's ranked this high. I'm not saying I would have ranked her as high. I probably would have been about number 20, but I'll explain why I understand. She's had a lot of championship success, she can cut good promos, um, except now it's doing the whole Fiend stuff, and I don't really care for that, but not going to get into that. She has done a lot when she was Glitter, Glitz, Sparkle, Bliss, and that was going nowhere. She then became uh, the manager of, but of you know, Buddy, Buddy and Murphy, Blake and Murphy, and actually that was pretty damn good. She actually was coming into her own there, and she's done some good stuff on the main roster. I personally think that her work isn't all that good in the ring, but... I can see why people also like her, and she's had some good matches. A lot of her work has reg regressed, rather, in my personal opinion, but then she's ramped it up with character work. Whether I like her or not, she has ramped it up with character work. So I would have ranked her lower, but I get why Alexa Bliss is here. Alexa Bliss. Anyway, yeah, I'm sorry, poor Nikki Cross. I really shouldn't have done that, but I do like Alexa, it, at least as far as like you know some of the stuff she's done in her career. Not her biggest fan, but I understand why she's ranked here. Number 12, Mickey James. Hey, they omitted the Piggy James thing. You know, when they said, oh, she's fat, except she looked like a human woman and she wasn't fat and she was beautiful She was beautiful then and is beautiful now and talented in the ring. And that feud with Trish, that is one of the greatest feuds that WWE has done. In all honesty, like they, it, at least in the last 20 years. From the beginning when Mickey showed up to, and I, I can't even, and I watch the TVs, I can't tell you just how, great it was to see because you could see the slow burn this is when you had two performers that want to do really good shit and this added a new twist to trish and uh twisted trish if you will except they didn't do that they did twisted bliss mickey just the whole thing of building up building up and then finally just snapping at her and kicking her and busting her face do you love me now do you love me i get goosebumps just thinking about it um wrestlemania 22 by the way i retro reviewed that you can check that out if you want i uh, glowingly talked about that match that match is one of my favorites and it really, and admittedly, yes, I had to make some edits because there was a Stratus faction screw up and stuff like that. And she grabbed Trisha's stratosphere and licked her fingers, and that didn't work out all that well. But they mostly focused on Mickey's feud with Trish. Because let's be perfectly honest, after that, they didn't really use her all that well. Even though she had some championship success and she did some good stuff. Then they did the Piggy James thing, and she beat Michelle McCool in about, what, 20 seconds and held the title for three weeks. Yeah, that's how you pay off a storyline where you humiliate a woman that isn't. Regardless of how you feel about somebody humiliating somebody like that to that point, why? Why? Men or women? Why? Why do that? Like, seriously. And always, oh, it was because Mickey was like, you know, a bit of a bitch. Okay. Y y there are other ways to humiliate people instead of making fun of the uh, weight issues they don't have or, you know, flaws that they don't have. It's just, because fans could see it, they didn't like the television. And the whole point is, oh, Mickey did have a great run in Impact. She did some really good stuff there, too. Um... Then, you know, uh, James Storm had her hit by a train. Don't understand why they did that. And they decided to, if she came back and had a great match with Asuka, take over Toronto. And from there, it's been uh, up and down, up and down. But I like Mickey, and I think Mickey deserved to be ranked here. I would have ranked her in the top 10, quite frankly. I would have taken somebody in the top 10 and ranked him a bit lower, which I'll talk about in the next video. But I think Mickey James is very, very good and deserves her place high on this list. Beth Phoenix. I approve. I love Beth Phoenix. Strong, powerful, perfect combination of beauty and power. And nothing I say right in this little uh, minute is going to encapsulate how I fully feel about Beth beyond saying that she overcame, you know, what was like it was a broken jaw. She's done great stuff. She, uh, you know, had a few with Kelly Kelly and made it watchable. And that was saying something because Beth Phoenix is way up here. And Kelly Kelly, bless her, was way down here as far as uh, in-ring ability. 
But Bat Phoenix is very, very good. Has always been very good. Um, her commentary work is pretty good in NXT, ex except she's having to shout over all the other guys. But, you know, all the stuff that she did, you know, various WrestleMania, you know, matches, all the stuff, you know, as far as, like, you know, being a mold raker for how women were perceived in wrestling because strong, talented, beautiful... Without China, there probably wouldn't have been a Beth Phoenix. Without Victoria, there probably wouldn't have been a Beth Phoenix, even though I think they were around almost at the same time, just a couple of years apart. But Beth is somebody you could look up to. She, you know, great mother. Her and Edge have uh, kids. They're all happy together and doing some good stuff. So honestly, I really do love Beth Phoenix. I think she is somebody that, you know, she's being appreciated more now because at the time that she was wrestling, she wasn't. She she did her best, but women's wrestling was still in that mold where it was seen as a bathroom break, even though there were some great talents. Not just Beth, but many others as well. So yeah, this was pretty damn good stuff. I really enjoyed this. Um, I won't say that Beth is my absolute favorite of all time, but Beth being ranked just outside the top 10 sounds about right, and she deserves uh, these accolades, and hopefully, maybe can make an in-ring return, but if she never does, she's had some great moments, some great returns, and... Is great, great stuff. Great goddamn career and deserved a WWE Hall of Famer. Anyway, so I got part four coming up here. The top ten. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. Agree, disagree, what I said. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Retlin. I'll see you soon.